Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear? Fantastic. Great to be with you all this morning. Uh, Let me just pray as we turn to God's Word together. Our Father, we've just sung and called each other to come and see how good you are. Please, as we open your words, would your Holy Spirit move in each of our hearts and empower us to come and see how good you are together. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, If you'd like a Bible, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 21 this morning. Do pop up your hand if you haven't got one, and I'm sure our stewards will be able to bring a Bible to you. Uh, If you've got the church Bibles, Genesis chapter 21 is wonderfully page 21, uh, just to keep things easy. Well, children, every, fam- uh, every Friday night or every other Friday night, we in our family, we do a family film night. I wonder if any of you do similar. I wonder, if you're going to watch a film, what is your go-to snack for your film? Hands up, any go-to snacks? Samuel. Sweets. Always a joy when you can have sweets with a film. Yeah, Rebecca. Popcorn. Very good. Uh, Abigail, one more. Sorry? Sweet, sweet pizza. Oh, I want to have film night in the Gould house. Pizza, sweets, popcorn. Popcorn is my go-to. And I'm quite old-fashioned, so I like to do popcorn in a saucepan with real, genuine popcorn seeds, popcorn kernels. Pouring them in. You pour them in the pan. You put it on the heat with a bit of oil, and you wait. And you give it a shake, and you wait. And you wait. And 30 seconds go by, and you wait. And a minute goes by, and you wait. A minute and a half, and you're still waiting. Two minutes, and you're starting to to worry, starting to doubt. Maybe these seeds are just too old. Maybe nothing's going to happen at all. And you wait, and you wait, until suddenly, one goes. Suddenly, the seed pops, and all that anticipation comes out in excitement. And as soon as one goes, you know a whole load of good stuff is about to come. You wait. And you wait, and you wait. 84 days ago now, it was the 3rd of September, and in the morning service, we heard God promise to a 75-year-old Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. 24th of September, can you remember all the way back then? We heard God promise to an 85-year-old Abraham, You will have a son who is your own flesh and blood. The 8th of October. And we heard God promise a 99-year-old Abraham. Your wife Sarah will bear a son and you will call him Isaac. 22nd of October, more than a month ago. And we heard God promise to 99-year-old Abraham at the appointed time next year, Sarah will have a son. And finally, it is the 26th of November, Genesis chapter 21, and all of that anticipation has built to bursting point. Our ear is right up against the popcorn pan, listening. Listening. Is anything going to happen for Abraham and Sarah? And then Genesis 21 and I'm assured that only a man can use (laughs) that sound to... uh, to, Anyway, Uh, Genesis chapter 21. If you want to follow along, then feel free to. If not, then just listen. And I'm going to read verses 1 through to 7 for us. God's Word tells us, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, and as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time 
God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Could you hear the excitement in those first few verses? It repeats, it almost seems to trip over itself. The Lord visited just as he said. The Lord did just what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son at the very time God had promised. The Lord, the Lord, as he said, as he promised, just as he promised. We can't miss it, can we? Despite how stupendously unlikely, how completely impossible it was for Sarah to get pregnant and to have a baby, it has all come true exactly as God promised. The Lord keeps his promises, and after years and years of waiting, they get to finally experience it. The Lord has kept his promises. And then again, following on through the passage, we get more of that excited repetition. Verse 2, Sarah became pregnant and bore a son. Verse 3, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. Verse 4, when his son. Verse 5, Abraham was 100 when his son Isaac was born to him. It almost sounds like when new parents are tripping over to tell you all those boring details about their new, new baby. A son, a son, a son is born, is born. All those years of waiting and finally, Abraham and Sarah have the promised son. The son of promise. The anticipation, that big question mark, will they have that child? Where is this child of promise? God's promises for blessing to the whole world are supposed to come through Abraham and Sarah's child, but where is this child? Finally, the great stream of promised blessing to the whole world can come. And just try to soak for a second in the joy of her reaction. There's laughter And more laughter. We've already seen quite a lot of laughter in Genesis. Back in Genesis chapter 17, Abraham just, he thought the idea that they could have children so old was so incredible that he literally fell down on his face laughing in disbelief. Then Genesis chapter 18, Sarah just thought this is too impossible now. She's given up on believing it's really possible at all. And we're told that she laughed to herself in bitter hopelessness. But now, as God finally keeps his promise, as the child of promise is born to Abraham's special family, the word laughter seems to burst out of every verse. We get eight times the verse for laughing in eight verses. They give their son the name Isaac, which means he laughs. And Sarah overflows with such joy, she sings out, God has brought me laughter. Everyone who hears of it will laugh with me. God's faithfulness to keep his promises has transformed a laughter of disbelief and a laughter of hopelessness into a laughter of overflowing joy and praise. They apply the covenant sign of circumcision in verse 4. That's basically a sign to show that Isaac is a member, a child of of Abraham's special family. And then in verse 8, we didn't read, they gather everyone for a big feast of celebration. God's faithfulness to keep his promises, giving this child of promise to Abraham's special family. And that is rightly the cause for huge celebration and praise. And just like that, 
of the first popcorn kernel, this child of promise is just the beginning. As we see Isaac there, we know a whole heap of good stuff is about to come. So much more is on the way. Because you see, Abraham and Sarah, they had to wait a long time, didn't they? They had to wait 25 years for that promise to come true. But even Isaac wouldn't take the blessing to the whole world. And actually, even as that promise of 25 years came true, there was an even bigger promise in the background, still waiting. There was a promise that was made to Eve thousands of years before Abraham and Sarah, that one day a child would be born, a child who wouldn't just bring laughter, but who would bring life. A child who would save the world, who would defeat evil once and for all and bring God's people back to Eden, back to life with him. And we're going to think about that promise in just a few minutes. Brilliant. Imagine that. Imagine if that happened for your birthday. That would communicate something massive about who you were, wouldn't it? If we had a Derby-wide celebration for Adam Curran's birthday, that would say something about what we thought of Adam Curran. Now, we've just seen from that first half that the Lord kept his promise. We saw that the child of promise was born to Abraham's special family. And we saw that everyone joined in joyful, laughter-filled celebration and praise. But even as they laughed and celebrated together, the whole of creation was still waiting, still holding its breath, still waiting for the one child who could answer that greater promise made to Eve. You see, through Isaac would come more and more children. Abraham's family would grow into a great nation, and the pages of Scripture are full of the ups and downs and twists and turns of Abraham's family. But all the while, they would wait for the one, for the child to fulfill not just one promise, but all the promises. And one day, about 2,000 years after Abraham and Sarah, a woman would be born. And when she grew up a bit, she would be promised, you will have a baby boy. Again, just like with Sarah, it would seem impossible Not because she was too old, but because she was too young and not even married. Like Sarah, she would ask, how will this be? Again, despite it being impossible, she would find herself pregnant with a child of promise in Abraham's special family. Like Abraham and Sarah, she and her husband-to-be are told what name to give the baby. But this time, it's not Isaac. He laughs. This time, it is Yeshua, the Lord saves. Not just the joyful answer to a great promise, but the magnificent answer to all of God's promises. Yeshua, or in English, Jesus. And like Sarah, this woman, Mary, bubbles over in joy And in song, and she sings this, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has remembered to be merciful to me, to us. No, he has remembered to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. As we look ahead to Christmas time, We see Mary, just as with Sarah, we see that God kept all of his promises. All his promises find their fulfillment in that manger with the baby Jesus. We see, as we look at Christmas, the child of promise. The one who would defeat the powers of evil and death and save people from all nations forever, born into Abraham's special family. And as this baby baby is born, 
we don't just get some friends coming round to a party. No, for this birth, the angel armies fill the sky and join in singing together in celebration, glory to God in the highest heaven. With Jesus, every single true member of Abraham's family, everyone who trusts in the Lord, receives the infinite and eternal blessings of life in Jesus. And yet there's just one more step that I want to make this morning. Because the celebration hasn't quite finished. If we wind another 2,000 years forward from Jesus again, we find the same joyful pattern repeating itself once more. You see, as any one of us believes and trusts in Jesus as our king, God's promises prove true again. We get to experience the joy of a God who keeps promises. His promise to bring blessings to all nations. His promise to save people from sin and death prove true again in us. As we trust in Jesus, we become children of promise in Abraham's special family. Paul writes this in Galatians. He says, understand then, those who have faith in Jesus are children of Abraham. You, brothers and sisters, that's everyone who believes in Jesus... You, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. Isn't that remarkable? Isaac, the child of promise. Jesus, the child of promise. And now, as we believe in Jesus, we too are children of promise in Abraham's family. Just as miraculous as was the birth of Isaac, just as magnificent as was the birth of Jesus, Anyone who comes to faith and puts their trust in Jesus, we're told, is born again, and it is just as miraculous as that birth of Isaac. Arguably more miraculous. And finally, as the Lord saves someone like you or me, he adopts us as another child in his family, and Jesus says... I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What would it mean if your birthday party, you had the skies filled with angels singing glory to God? That would say something remarkable about how special you were, wouldn't it? And yet Jesus says, the moment you believe in Jesus, that is what happens. Whether you see it or not, the moment you place your trust in Jesus and say, I believe, the angels of heaven get out their instruments again and start to play a hallelujah song. So just uh, has Richard been here this morning? So sad that we don't get to uh, rejoice with him this morning, that that is what happens. But had Richard been well enough, we would have joined in with the angels here on earth. That's what we would have been doing, celebrating that the Lord has kept his promises, that a new child is part of Abraham's family, joining in the heavenly celebrations with the angels. I wonder what it means that that is the celebration that God gives for any of us who come to faith. What does that say about how the Lord God feels about us? Certainly not worthless, are we, to him. By his astonishing grace, we are worth to him angel armies celebrating in the skies. Wouldn't it be a delight and encouragement? Maybe afterwards over coffee, maybe we could share a little bit with each other about how the Lord's promises have come true in our life, how he's rescued us and how he's blessed us. And of course, even without Richard here, we can still lift up praise to God, to the God who gave Isaac, to the God who gave his only son, Jesus, and to the God who's brought each one of us who believes into his heavenly family to be his child. We're going to break open 
the Christmas songs list this morning. The time has come. Apologies to those of you who feel it shouldn't happen till December. But we're joining in the angels singing celebration at a new birth. And so it feels right that we call each other, we call all the nations to join in, to hear the angels' song, to hark the herald angels sing, and to join in celebrating this king who brings life and healing to everyone who turns to him. So as the musicians play, let's stand up and let's join in with those angel choirs singing glory to God in the highest.